we are, fantastic. Look at this. I have climbed up here. There's the Ohio River over there. A little bit of a steep climb and I'm very out of shape. But where all this recent construction was, the trees and the grass haven't grown up yet. They just did this. And it gives an excellent place to study rock layers. You can see these are the dynamite drill holes right here. That's where they uh, they dig to blow, thing, blow this rock face up. But all this is very recent, all been, being done here in the last year. And um, gives me a good chance to talk about layers. Right there you see a transition between the crumbly layer up there at the top and a nice smooth transition right there. Okay. Now the interesting thing about that is that when you walk down a little ways, you find something changes about these layers, okay? You can even see some of the debris changes down here where they blew it up. And what you're gonna find is an interchange between the layers that's not so smooth. I don't find a lot of uh, a lot of people addressing this issue very often, and I don't think they explain it the way I'm going to explain it. So stay tuned, and you've probably heard something like this before, but maybe you haven't heard it quite like this. Now, look right here. You'll see that these layers, this layer comes down. All right, yeah, the crumbly layer was nice and smooth over there, but down here, right down here, it starts to mix with the layer below it. Little bits and pieces of the upper layer even all the way down here. Now remember, we're only looking at two layers, not thousands of layers, but below my feet are thousands of more layers just like this. You'll see that the layers intermingle with each other. And here's a perfect one right here. You have some of the upper layer coming down into the layer underneath and the lower layer circling up into the layer above. Now, one would think that if these layers were millions and millions of years old and that this layer was deposited, before that layer, then between the layers, we're missing something. What do you notice when you look around right now? You see a lot of grass, you see a lot of trees, you see some soil. All those trees and all that grass has roots. Well, roots is for you Southerners. Now, those roots, there's none to see right here between the layers. Isn't that interesting? There's no, no roots anywhere. And not just between these two layers, but if we were to dig into any of the thousands of layers beneath our feet, we would see the exact same phenomenon. We would never see a layer where there's some topsoil and topsoil can be pretty thick, you know, it could be taller than I am now. And a bunch of roots down in it. <laughs> now that should be commonplace if there were, if there was a time between the first flood and the second flood that deposited the upper layer. Now some might say, well this is just examples of the same layer. I don't know, I'm not a geologist. But you can see examples exactly the same, okay, between exactly what I'm pointing out here, exactly the same anywhere you want to look, anywhere you want to find rock layers, you'll find the same phenomenon. Any position where you see two layers coming together, it's going to look just like this. So even if somebody comes back and says, well, these are actually the same layer. Okay, well, fine, okay, it doesn't really matter because this is just an example of the bigger picture. I can, and, I, and I will, over time, show you plenty of other examples of this same thing. Now, 
evolutionists or great age theorists of the earth doesn't necessarily have to be an evolutionist to believe this if you think the world is really really old that billions of years happened you believe not in one large flood depositing all these layers at the same time which is obviously the case in this example right here because this layer had to be deposited at the same time as that layer <laughs> and they and they transition together all up through there just like any other two rock layers anywhere on earth okay even if you wanted to say this was one layer i'm just preempting what you might say okay by saying that now For you to believe that there are rock layers all around the world, which is true, and believe that they are deposited, and there's not one place on Earth, well, there's almost no places on Earth that you can go where there are not rock layers. So the rock layers are everywhere on Earth. So that means that there has to have been not one flood, according to these guys, but millions and millions and millions of floods all over the entire earth which one is more likely to be believed one flood or millions and millions and millions of floods which one is more likely true now i love seeing some of these this inter intermingling of these two layers because this is just very similar to what you see in all sorts of places just about anywhere you know one layer going up into another intermingling right here from the top to the bottom from the bottom to the top and so on and even if this layer is the same as that layer same material whatever i don't know then wherever you do look you're going to see the same thing i have seen thousands and thousands and thousands of examples you can drive through the hills of tennessee you know, Kentucky was anywhere they dynamited to make an interstate highway or a U.S. highway. You're going to find thousands of examples of this. So which one's more likely to believe that there are millions and millions of floods all over the earth? Now, you have to understand that this is just a just two layers. These layers go down thousands of feet. And in fact, Right now, below my feet, right now, 9,000 feet down is the well-known Utica and Marcellus Shell Foundations. A big debate around here. It's making a lot of Texans rich, but it's not making so many people around here as rich. Uh, all the Texas oil companies came up here to get down to the shell. Okay. Well... I don't really, I don't have any dog in that fight, but hopefully uh, whichever one wins makes my stock go up. That's all I care about. <laughs> well, anyway, that, that shell formation is so big that it goes from here in eastern Ohio through West Virginia, most of Pennsylvania, like 60% of Pennsylvania has Marcellus shell underneath it. Oil shell that they're you know, fracking and getting oil out of right now. It goes through a bit of Virginia and even into um, New York. That's a big formation. It's right below my feet right now, 9,000 feet down. So that means there's rock layers at least a mile and a half consecutive numbers of layers beneath my feet. And every single one of them is going to have examples like this of intermingling between the upper layer and the lower layer. Some places it'll be more smooth, like over here on the right. Then you might follow it a few feet, or maybe you might have to follow it 50 miles. But eventually you're going to find transition areas like this that are all mingled together. And these layers are thousands of miles long. Now, how is that possible under a evolutionary time scale of billions of years or a long earth time scale? I'll try not to use the word evolution because they like to obfuscate 
the terminology by saying, well, you know, you're talking about geology now, not evolution, but they can't understand, you know, that those two sciences are supposed to be mutual beneficial to each other, by and large, you know. They do understand it, but when you're debating them, they'll try to hide that. Now, I am uh, just amazed at what I see anywhere on Earth. I'm going to go to different places for the next few weeks and look at more rock layers, just like these ones. Okay, there, see the transition looks a little more smooth in this area. You know? And you can see the different kinds of rocks that have come down. There's like, I think that's probably a limestone or something. I'm no geologist, so I, you know. I don't know what kinds of rocks are what. What's that, probably a sandstone or something? You know, I don't know. Yeah, that's got sand on it. So there's some sandstone and limestone, I can be confident. Or maybe that's some sort of shell. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not up on that. But you can see, I'm pretty sure this is two different kinds of rock. Okay? So I don't think we're going to be able to say that these are two... Um, or, I'm sorry, I don't think we're going to be able to say that this is just one type of rock. It's pretty obvious to me that it's two different kinds of layers. Sandy and you know, limestone or shell or something. Now, I don't think people really like to put this stuff together in their head, and that's, that's how people get to be long earthers, because they really just don't go out and look at it themselves. They read it in a textbook. But between all these layers, or at least one of the layers, for heaven's sakes, Somewhere on Earth, we should be able to find topsoil between the layers. We should be able to find big root structures, burrows of animals down in here. You know? We should be able to, to find big, huge tree root structures. And it should be obvious. They'd be fossilized in here. Okay? Now, unless you think that every single place on Earth was always covered with water... <laughs> For all these millions and billions of years that you think. Now, that's even crazier than what you think the flood story is. The flood story only, you know, floods were on the earth for a year. But it, certainly what we observe is that all this came together at the same time. That's why they're intermingled. You, know, you have a little bit of it down here and a little bit of it up there. A little bit up there and a little bit down here. That's what you would see if you took sand and rock in one of those little glass uh, hydrological sorter things, you know, a little toy, and you just shake them up, and then it it separates the, the layers inside the glass. Some, some from the top layer will intermingle. It'll look just like what you see. Remember, science has to be observable and repeatable. But the fictitious idea that each one of these layers had mil millions of years in between them is not observable in the natural world we can't repeat anything like that and we don't see that in nature we never see it <laughs> we don't sometimes see it we never see it okay and i've you know and i've looked at a lot of the rock layers driving by and i've really just paid attention to what i see and i don't see exceptions to that anywhere i don't see exceptions in the textbook now sometimes you'll see trees that were obviously laid down in deposited water, and they'll be stripped of their bark most of the time. They won't have any roots, you know. And you'll know that they, and they'll exist between the layers. What's that tell you? Well, that tells you right there that the top layer and the bottom layer was deposited at the exact same time, just like what you see here. And that explains this intermingling of the strata. <laughs> Now, this stuff's just so obvious when you actually go out in the field and look at it. Now, try to go out and look at the strata and try to explain billions of years between the layers. And not just two layers that you could call an exception to the rule if you wanted. Go anywhere and try to find what should be the norm that there should be topsoil between the layers and lots of roots and grass and burrows and, you know... Go see if you see that anywhere. Observable and repeatable. What do we see in nature? What is real? This is what we see in nature. 
Long ages is not what we see. We see very quick transitions between the two with nothing in between. Obvious show of simultaneous deposition. We do not see anywhere up here any evidence that there was any time between these layers. Not just here. We don't see it anywhere. And if this layer goes for, say, 50 miles and then intermingles over here, and then it goes 50 miles that way and then it intermingles with the layers underneath, <laughs> or 100 miles, it tells you that all this stuff all happened, excuse me, all happened at the exact same time. You know, the in the Grand Canyon area, you have layers that go even farther. They go almost to Canada, all the way down to the Grand Canyon area. You know, just quote a little Ken Hammett stuff there. Um, you have layers that are that, that long. There are other rock layers I understand that... Uh, are vastly bigger than that. <laughs> Tens of thousands of miles long, or maybe. No, I don't know. That sounds too high of a number. I know, uh, if you, if, I guess, uh, maybe if you follow, trace the outside of it, it'd be tens of thousands of miles, maybe. There's some big rock layers out there. Maybe I'm exaggerating. I don't know. <laughs> it's neat seeing these drill holes right through here. <laughs> so, why don't we ever see burrows you know little pond areas small areas of deposition you know and at the bottom you'd see algae roots you know where the pond I don't know you ever seen a pond ponds always have algae always have plant life in the bottom of them growing you know so if you found a small area where you saw there was a pond or a lake there you should see little tiny roots. Let's say there was a pond right here, okay? You should see little, at the bottom of the pond, you should see roots. You should see uh, water life right there in just in those local areas. But you never see evidence like that. That doesn't exist anywhere on Earth. You might find a plant like, say, right here, randomly buried over here. Another plant, you know, 20 miles down the road buried. <laughs> What's that tell you? It all got uprooted at the same time, swooshed around in a whole bunch of dirt and water, and hydrologically sorted and deposited all at the same time, all over the entire Earth. That's what we observe. That's what we can repeat with a hydrological sorter. But this concept of millions of years between the transitions, we don't observe it. We don't see any evidence of it, and we certainly can't repeat in any scientific way any method under which that could possibly be true. Because everywhere on earth is like this. You're not gonna see, this is not the exception, this is the rule. So I'm sorry, long earth proponents that believe in billions of years I think this accumulated slowly over time. It didn't. This is the example and the observation of a very big catastrophe. You know? I don't know if somebody's honking at me or what. <laughs> well, hello, whoever you are. <laughs> well, another view of the river here before I go. Take a nice look. This is a pretty area to live in, especially in the fall. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop here.